Paul from the local gun shop the other day, and they said they had somebody looking for an inside the waistband holster. In particular, it's a common firearm, but he has a under the barrel. He's got a uh, laser sight on his, and he can't find anybody that makes a holster that fits that firearm with a laser sight, or at least that laser sight. And he just wants the simple fold-over pocket style holster with a single uh, belt clip that basically goes right on the side of the firearm. Or about there. So, that's what we're going to work on. And as usual, I start with a tracing, and you'll see that there's the tracing is doubled. That's because I take, I lay the firearm down, trace around it, then I roll it over on its sights until it's laying the other direction, and this gives me the thickness of the firearm as well as all the rest of the dimensions of it, and then I trace it around again. So this is just about as thick under this barrel as it is on this back, so we need to have enough room for that as well. And so we've got a little over an inch between those. So we need to account for that in our pattern as well. So we need to have a half an inch on each side, plus enough to be a seam allowance, plus thickness of the leather times two, basically. So we'll say probably about another quarter inch on top of that. So I'm actually adding an inch and a quarter here instead of just... Now these are actually really easy holsters to design because they're basically just a pocket for a gun. You don't need to make them fit extraordinarily tight. Since they're inside the waistband, you're going to have a belt and waistband of the pants that are pushing against it and holding it. And you're really just trying to keep the firearm in place and keep it from sliding down into their pants as they're wearing it. So it's just basically making a pocket. I do like to always keep the trigger guard covered and the trigger covered so somebody can't accidentally snag that trigger as they're trying to draw. But I leave a finger hold here that they can get at least the tip of their finger into to help draw, because a lot of times these firearms don't have extremely long uh, grips on them. So you need all the space you can to get fingers to them. Now, the front of it doesn't need to cover a whole lot. But the back of it, we're going to want it to go up past the top of the particular firearm here. Right direction. Right now, if I considered this to be the grain surface of leather and I folded it, this would actually be a left-handed holster. And I need to make it right-handed. So like I said, I could have been drawing it the other way around. But it doesn't matter, because you just turn your pattern over, and then it's right-handed. To get this same shape, over on the other side, I'm going to fold the piece of paper in half and line up the tracings with each other, and then I'll be able to trim it to the same amount. I do not want to trim much further than that, because this has to come all the way up here. That's where the pattern is not symmetrical. All right. And that actually turned this way. basic pattern for a very simple inside the waistband holster. Which is what it is. Now then, other things you can add on to these that I'm probably going to do on this one is you can add a piece on that's going to be um, to stiffen it up and that'll keep it from crushing 
whenever there's not a firearm in it, when you draw, you want to be able to stay open a little bit so you can reholster, at least. Holding the spring clip on is going to be a separate piece in this case. Something shaped about like that. Odd little shape. We'll clean this all up, straighten up some of the lines, but that's pretty much the basics of what we're going to do. We're going to cut out a piece like this, a piece like this, the whole piece, and then a lining piece. So, I'm going to turn this around for it to be a right-handed holster. We'll just rough cut those and then come back with the hole punch and punch some holes to get closer. I want to find the appropriate sized hole punch. some holes to make my life a little easier on cutting this out. So now let's do some edge beveling, mark some stitch lines, and punch a few holes, and we should be good to go. And this one's going to get a stitching groove all the way around it it's going to be stitched on everywhere. And we're going to punch some holes. They're going to be for our spring clip here. going to use a knife to connect the top two holes together by cutting out everything between them and leaving basically a eighth inch wide and about an inch long slot cut in the leather. through like thus and it held in place by a single rivet down here in the bottom that we'll have to set before we stitch everything together that's always important to remember to put this in before you do all the stitching um, and that's why I left enough room around the edges to be able to get past it with the machine I could have made this quite a bit narrower if I was hand stitching and gotten closer to that clip And we're going to be using some of the light brown professional oil dye. I think it's just sold as pro dye now. Um, this is an older bottle that I've got and still says professional oil dye on it. Alright, and that's all three pieces. Dyed up. And those will have to sit and dry for a little while. Okay, after it's had a chance to dry for, oh, I don't know, about a half hour. I'm going to use some Resoline as a finish. And just put it on the sheet full of scraps. And sort of rub it into it. Okay, so I'm going to get these glued up. And this riveted in. We can start some of the assembly basically. Now, the real trick on using contact cement 
on a holster is that you let it pretty much dry until it's not glossy anymore and then it'll stick together as soon as they touch. The problem with that is, is that you don't have much chance to try and get it exactly where you want it. And so you have to be very careful how you place it. And in this case, I want to actually have the holster folded at least about 90 degrees while I've got the liner glued into it so that it doesn't wrinkle up as bad when I fold it later. So what I'm going to do is I actually I put my mallet down there to give myself a bit of a curve to work with. And then I can get it kind of stuck just on one side. And line it all up. Before I fold the holster. And get the other side stuck. While this is curing, we'll go ahead and put this piece together. And that is just setting a rivet, so it's really simple. Just line everything up. There it goes, pop the rivet through. on it and then use a rivet setter. So my next step is I'm probably going to go ahead and stitch around the top and the bottom of this. I won't stitch where that actually closes up. Um, but I'll do that before I trim these edges. Because sometimes when you stitch, it's like the liner stretches, and you can wind up with it sticking out some. If you trim it, stitch, then you have to kind of like go back and trim it again a little bit, and it's hard to do because there's very little little bit sticking out. But if you stitch first and then go back and trim it, you'll get a nice even trim to the edge. A lot easier. So I went down, did the stitching on it, top and bottom left it unstitched where it's going to actually fold together. And after that, it's time to go ahead and take a utility knife and trim off our excess. Okay. And once that's trimmed, it's going to be edge bevel it, dye it, and we're going to finish, again, the top and the bottom. We're not going to mess with these sides. I'll probably dye them, but I won't actually try and do anything to get them all slick smooth yet. And we'll also finish the edges on this piece and get it ready to start putting things together. And you can make your edges a different color than you make the rest of your piece. A lot of people like to use a real dark brown on an edge. But in this case, I am just doing what I normally do and using the same color that I used on the rest of it. And then it's gum dragant and a slicker. We're going to finish up the edges. We'll start with this little fella. So, we'll still have to come back and finish the edges on this part after we've got it all together. We'll sand it and finish those, but that'll be like our last step right before shaping the holster. But anyway, the next step is going to be putting this clip on and it's going to go just below our stitch line there maybe on the stitch line but I think it'll work best to go just below it um, and we'll stitch on all of this basically while it's bent about 90 degrees or so and that'll really make it stiff and hard to bend And again, I'll bust, just go down and do that off camera. Right. Just downstairs, got this sewn on. It's not too bad. And I got this sewn up, put it all together, and then I took it over to the sander real quick and sanded these edges to match each other. Now there's a real sharp corner on these now, which we don't want. So we're going to take the edge bevel to that, take it off, 
We're going to touch it up just a little bit with some dye because there's a couple spots I sanded through. And then we'll go back and use the gum drag and slick it all down again. really is to do a little bit of shaping on it so I'll have to throw it in some water and wet it down I'll do some smoothing up when I've got it wet I don't have anything shaped exactly like the pistol I need to shape it to so there's still gonna be some shaping whenever I meet the customer with it but I do have a BB gun that's close to the same shape and I can tape something underneath the barrel that'll simulate the laser sight that he has on his and I can get it close Close enough, probably, to fit, so that I don't have to do too much whenever I finally meet him with it. So this, as I mentioned, is a BB gun, CO2 gun. That's a very similar size and shape. I've compared it to the drawing that I've got. It matched pretty close. And I've got some blocks of scrap leather here. I'm just going to tape those together and tape them underneath the barrel, and that will be our simulation for our laser sight that we need to make. Alright, this has been soaked, and it's, as you can see, really flexible now. You can squish it down flat or open it up wide. And we're just going to work with it a little bit here. Pretty much a finished inside the waistband holster. I'll let this dry and do a little bit of touch up on it and then it'll be time to contact the customer and let them know it's done.